Hi, I'm Doug Patton, and this is How To Architect. How to design like an architect, a modern home. Architects make ideas real and create objects in which we dwell. The Romanian sculptor Brancusi called architecture habitable sculpture. Popular culture mythologized the architect. He's Michael Brady, Tom Hanks, Ted Mosby, or Howard Rourke. He's also what Brad Pitt, George Costanza, or Barack Obama wanted to be. But architects are real, and in the United States it takes about as long to become a licensed architect as it does to become a licensed physician. Edmund Bacon said, it's in the doing that the idea comes. Every architect problem solves by doing, that is, writing, sketching, drawing, model making, and collaborating. Projects start with a client and a program. In the first phase, the architect asks four fundamental questions. Who, what, where, and why. The answers to the first three questions inspire the architect and help to answer the last. Frank Lloyd Wright designed a famous house for the Kaufman family. They wanted a new home designed in Wright's signature style. They owned a piece of property in a forested site with a river and waterfall near Pittsburgh. The information gleaned from each of these three questions inspired Wright. His idea was to create a home that sat on top of the waterfall rather than simply viewed it. Throughout his career, his work was characterized by organic solutions. This one used his signature long, low forms. The series of cantilevers nestle into the landscape and become one of the world's most well-known design solutions. Like every architect, his style developed over many years. Architects are inspired and have ideas. Those ideas are run through a filter unique to every architect. That's the reason why architects design the way they do. This is Scott Pat and Lisa DeJean. They're professionals, designers, artists, and husband and wife. They want a new home and contracted me to design it. Their program is a project with three bedrooms, three baths, a sunken living room, large kitchen and master suite, as well as a separate studio building and swimming pool. During the initial phase of design, we also discussed images that inspire them. These included the delicate arch of Arches National Park, bridge and barn architecture, and buildings with stunning structural gymnastics. After this, they discussed the type of architecture they wanted. They love modernism. In particular, Philip Johnson's Connecticut Glass House, Charles and Ray Eames' home in California, and Mies van der Rohe's Farnsworth House in Plano, Illinois. The site for the home is a five-acre piece of property located on a hill adjacent to a river in rural Pennsylvania. A wide variety of factors will affect the architecture, from weather and foliage to topography, zoning codes, and the sun. As we began design, I was particularly inspired by an image from our boyhood past. A covered bridge Scott and I used to visit almost daily in the summer. I began with parti sketches derived from Scott and Lisa's artwork and ideas about how best to utilize the sloping site. One of the themes that emerged early was to think about the house much like a human spine, with functions that radiate from a cantilevered core. I sketched and researched similar building typologies. Eventually, an initial design emerged. The garage, studio, and main living portions of the home radiate from a core set into the hillside. The living portion cantilevers from the hill to take advantage of the pitching site and striking views. The challenge with the design was the length of travel from one end of the composition to the other. So I kept sketching and eventually settled on a revision in which the functional elements are grouped closer together. The minimalist aesthetic is derived from the modern sensibilities of Van der Rohe, Eames, and Johnson. The materials are steel, wood, and stone. The studio and living portion of the home take advantage of the views and hillside. The garage is buried beneath the earth and the pool sits adjacent, above ground. The configuration of the cantilevered exterior steel framework borrows from the exposed diagonal structure of a nearby bridge. 
It also echoes the powerful expression of various structures admired by Scott and Lisa early in the process. In the end, the building is a product of inspiration filtered through my knowledge and experience. That's design, and that's why the building looks like it does. I'm Doug Patton. We'll see you next time.